Hello students, this is Professor Frenetovich here. I'm going to talk about botany today, and specifically the botany of cannabis. So get ready for some plant anatomy. Here we go. The first thing that we will discuss today will be cells. Then we're going to look at stems, leaves, roots, and flower anatomy. We have a lot to cover, so this is going to be a two-part lecture. This is the first video, and then please also check out the second video. We're going to get through cells and stems in this video, then the second one. We'll include leaves, roots, and the flowers. Now, plant cells and cells in general may be something of a distant memory for some of you. This might be something you studied in high school years ago, or it might be something that's fresh in your mind. Um, in any case, there are some parts of a plant cell that you should know about because they affect the overall plant, and especially with cannabis, we have to know what our cannabis plants are made of. So plants and animals are called multicellular creatures, multicellular organisms. And that means that we are made of many cells. A human is made of trillions of cells, and plants are made of thousands, millions, billions of cells as well, depending on how big they are. Um, the bigger the plant, the more cells it has. So a giant redwood in the forest has trillions of cells, if not more. A tiny little seedling may have hundreds or thousands of cells. So outside of a plant cell, is the cell wall. This is not really considered part of a plant cell, but it is something that's deposited outside of the plant from what's inside of the plant cell, deposited outside of the cell for structure and support. The plant cell, the plant cell is mostly made of fibers, like cellulose fibers. And so for a cannabis plant, um, that's where we get the fibers for hemp. The hemp fibers are cell wall fibers. It's also what makes up our dietary fiber. So when you're eating plants, vegetables, fruits, um, thinking you're getting your fiber in while well, you're eating the cell walls, which have the fiber. Okay, so that is for protection structure support for the plant cell. Just inside that, and it's usually um, indistinguishable from the cell wall when we look at microscopy images, is the cell membrane. The cell membrane is something that we find in any cell whether it's a bacterial cell, an animal cell, a fungal cell, or a plant cell. Every cell has a cell membrane. And that is a flexible sac made of fats and proteins that holds everything in. Okay, so a cell membrane there, it has little pores in it to let um, some food come in, let some waste go out. Just to the right of that in this picture is the vacuole. Sometimes this is called a central vacuole or a large central vacuole. The vacuole is a storage structure and we call it an organelle. It's like a little organ inside a plant cell. And it mainly stores water for a plant cell. Now there are other ions and nutrients that can be dissolved in that water, but think of it as the water sac for a cell. Now a plant cell is supported by that cell wall, but also by the water that's in that vacuole. When it's full, there's turgor pressure and that pushes on the cell membrane and the cell wall. That helps to keep a plant upright. Imagine like a water balloon. Um, when the vacuole loses water, say you forget to water your plant, then the vacuole itself will shrink. It will pull in on the cell membrane and then the plant loses its stability and can wilt or fall over. So watering the plant fills up that vacuole and allows the plant to stay upright. We also have a nucleus here. The nucleus is often shown in red, just in illustrations, but this is where the, the DNA is located. So if you're breeding or looking at plant genetics, you're looking at things inside the nucleus. Another important organelle shown here is a chloroplast. Now we have got three in this picture. There are usually lots of chloroplasts in a plant cell. And the chloroplast is what does photosynthesis. And essentially what that is, is harnessing sunlight to make sugars for the plant. So when the plant is out in the sun, it's taking in the photons of, of light that does um, lots of chemical reactions inside a chloroplast, um, leading to the creation of glucose sugar. And the plant can break down that sugar and feed itself. And it does that, breaks down the sugar in the 
mitochondria. So the mitochondria is where sugars get broken down. We see mitochondria in plant cells, but we also see them in animal cells and fungal cells as well. So those are some important parts to this picture. I know there's a lot more here, um, but those are the pieces that I want you to be aware of. This is a different illustration showing a plant cell. And so I always recommend to my biology students to look at as many pictures as possible so you can put together some of the important pieces and see how different artists and illustrators interpret these things. You'll also um, be seeing some microscopy images, some images through a microscope in this lecture. So you can take what you see here this nice cartoon drawing illustration, and then apply it to what we see in real life. So here we have a nice thick cell wall shown in kind of this orange color. The membrane just inside that really tied up close to that cell wall. Here's our vacuole. Here it's shown as being clear, just kind of like a big jelly bean. Here's the nucleus. And this is kind of cut in half, kind of a wedge taken out of it. So we can see inside the nucleus and those little strands are chromatin. That's the genetic material for the cell. Essentially that's the DNA when the cell is just in its kind of resting stage. Uh, mitochondria is shown right here in orange. This has been sliced through so we can see that it's got this wavy inside membrane to it. And then the chloroplasts look a bit different here because they're sort of see-through and we could see the little green parts inside. So that's where the chlorophyll is, the green pigment that plants have. Um, chlorophyll is just one of lots of different pigments that we find in plants. And even within chlorophyll, there are different types of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll A gives a nice bright green color to a plant. Chlorophyll B has a more olivey appearance to it. And these different pigments, even the different chlorophylls, attract and absorb different wavelengths of light. So they're beneficial to the plant. The more wavelengths of light a plant cell can absorb, the more photosynthesis it can do, and the more sugar it can make. So some important parts of the plant cell just written out here. You should know the vacuole. Keep, it, keep your plants watered so they will stay upright. The vacuole is important there. Nucleus contains DNA. Chloroplast, the site of photosynthesis. The plant is going to need to do photosynthesis to do all the things it does, including making cannabinoids. So you got to keep um, keep your plant green and keep it in the sun. Plastids. These generally contain pigments of carbo of carbohydrates. Um, they help in the production of cannabinoids. So these are sometimes chloroplasts, sometimes other pigments. And then we have our cytosol, a substance that makes up the bulk of the cell, site of cannabinoid and terpene production. I didn't point that out in the previous slide, but that is all this filler stuff that everything seems to be floating in. Cytosol, sometimes it's called cytoplasm. So this picture is showing some cells shown under a microscope over here. So we have these blue lines here, and these cells are long and thin, long and thin. Down here at the bottom of this picture, each cell is purple and a little bit rounder and smaller. Okay. And we even have cells here that are very, very long and very thin. So these are inside the stem of this cannabis plant. Okay. And what we have here is an organism. We have the organ, which is the stem, and we have different tissues made up of cells. Okay. So here is another microscopic image of um, cells for a plant. This is red onion, and this is one big cell here in the middle. Now this looks really huge in the picture, but it is microscopic. The nucleus is located here. Cytosol is all within the cell. And then we see little bits of um, organelles, maybe 
um, pigment molecules or pigment organelles there. This is an aquatic plant named Elodia. That's its genus, actually. And going back, I wanted to show you how many chloroplasts can be jammed into a plant cell. So here we can see there are dozens. Here's one plant cell. I'm putting my cursor around the cell wall and cell membrane, which are so close together we can't distinguish them. And then we see all these little green circle things. Those are the chloroplasts. They'll actually move around to where it's brightest inside the cell, which is really fun to watch. This is a red pepper cell, big cell right in the middle here showing chromoplasts, um, a different type of pigment uh, organelle. So cells work together to make tissues. So a group of cells that have roughly the same type of shape and do similar functions are tissues. Tissues come together to make organs. Organs work together to make organ systems. And organ systems work together to make organisms. This is something we see in all multicellular organisms in biology. So we can have um, different types of vascular cells making up vascular tissues. Okay making up the vascular system of the plant. So there are three major types of tissues that we're going to look at, and then we are going to be looking at our organs today. So the three major tissue types in plants are vascular tissues, which conduct water and sugars. Then we also have epidermis tissues. These line the outside of the plant, okay, just like we have epidermis in our skin. And then ground tissue, which makes up the bulk of the plant. Okay, we'll see these three tissue types in all the organs of the plant. So let's look at the first organ, the stem. So this is one vegetative organ of a plant. Now vegetative means that it's part of the growing stage of the plant, uh, the vegetative stage. So this is important for that. And you might be wondering, well, what other stages will we look at? Reproductive. So when we get to flowers, we'll talk about veg uh, reproductive organs. So stems, we can have one or more stems within a plant. It depends on the plant and it depends on its environment. Um, sometimes you'll go through the forest, you'll see a bunch of oaks, trunks, straight and tall. And then occasionally you'll see an oak with three different trunks at the base. So um, your cannabis plants might be the same. Uh, leaves attach at the nodes of a stem. So right here is a node where leaves are coming out and right here is a node where another set of leaves is coming out. We can also have branching occurring at the nodes. In between the nodes is the internode. Stems have various functions. They can support the plant help it to reach sunlight. They can do photosynthesis if a stem is pigmented and stems can function in storage. So with cannabis plants, we see a lot of support being done by the stems and the stems can be fairly thick. Um, stems can be two inches in diameter to support the plant. They can also, in cannabis, be photosynthetic stems. If you see stems that are green, which I see a lot, they're doing photosynthesis there. And the stems can also store sugars and water for the plant. Now, interestingly, the more sunlight a plant gets, the shorter that internode becomes. So if a plant is grown in dim light, the plant reaches up to get to the sun and those internodes will lengthen. But if you have lots of bright lights or your plants are outside, the internodes will be shorter. And that's usually preferred by cannabis growers. So just to end this part of the show, uh, here is one node on a cannabis stem, nice and big, and you could see some branches coming off and some leaves coming off. Now stay tuned and check out the next video in this presentation.